Welcome to this week's Travel Talk Show. This week, we are going to head to Peru. I really appreciate that you've taken time to come with us on this journey. Um, and I hope you enjoy the next hour or so while we uh, are in Peru exploring and seeing what this fabulous tour and destination have to offer. Um, so our tour to Peru is from September 21st to October 1st of this year. Um, today's tour overview will take you from Lima to the Sacred Valley. You'll explore quaint and quirky Cusco, visit the most iconic archaeological site in the world, and travel by luxury train to Lake Titicaca and meet a tribe that live on an island made of reeds. Uh, just so you know, if you have any questions, you can definitely type them into the Q&A um, area. So on your menu bar, which might be at the bottom of your screen, or maybe at the side of your screen, if you hover over that, it'll open it up and it'll show you an area that says Q&A. That's a great place. If you think of a question along the way, type it in there. We will answer them at the end. Um, or if you want at the end, you can also, there's a place where you can raise your hand. So you can raise your hand and ask a question and we'll open your, your microphone and you can actually come on and raise your, um, It'll actually let you raise your hand. Um, if you want to chat, there's also a little chat feature. So chat is more for just chatting and talking amongst yourselves, um, laughing at me because I mispronounced something or, or whatever you'd like to do in the chat, you can do that. So uh, the chat will be, uh, have also Debbie and Irene are here from the Women's Travel Club. So they'll be on the chat and uh, they can answer any kind of quick questions, but anything that kind of they think that everybody might want to hear the answer to, we'll save to the end. So that's a little bit of our housekeeping and we'll get started. So we are the Women's Travel Club. We do small group tours worldwide, which are designed for women. Most women come to us as solo travelers, but we'll quickly make some great travel friends. Uh, we will match roommates. So if you wanna take advantage of a lower double occupancy rate, but you're coming by yourself, you can let us know and we'll match you with a roommate. Uh, or you can opt to have the single rate room and have a room to yourself. I am Marianne Seltha. I am in charge of the marketing department at the Women's Travel Club. I also have uh, with me Irene, who is from hey. operations. So she is who usually answers the phone or the chat if you're contacting us for anything. So a lot of you might have already talked to Irene at some point. Uh, and feel free to say hi to her in the chat if you have. Also, yeah. we have Debbie here with us and she's from the tour department. Debbie is who puts together and makes all these fantastic tours and make sure that they all run very smoothly and have all the great inclusions that you want to have along the way. So let's head to Peru. Peru is located in Western South America. It's just below Ecuador and surrounded by Brazil, Bolivia, and Chile. It has three main landscapes. So it's gonna have the coastal area, which is gonna run right along the ocean there. Then it has the Andes mountain range, runs right along inside a little bit there. And then the other side of the mountain range, you have the Amazon rainforest. We're going to start our tour here in the capital, Lima. The capital and the largest city in Peru, Lima is located in the central part of the country. It's a melting pot of cultures and offers a mixture of European, Indian, African, and Asian influences. The city of Lima was founded by Francisco Pizarro in the Catholic feast day of the Epiphany in 1535, earning it the nickname of the city of kings. The city became the capital of the Spanish Viceroyalty of Peru and grew into the continent's richest town. Lima was devastated by an earthquake in 1746, but was, was rebuilt quickly and became the capital of Peru upon independence in 1821. The beginning of the 20th century witnessed a population boom, and as the city began to industrialize, the people started to move from the country into Lima. 
Today, Lima is a major point of entry for visitors on a Peru tour and has a well-developed tourist infrastructure. The historic center of Lima is a massive draw for tourists and was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site, site in 1988. There are district houses, colonial architecture, and many churches that date from as early as the 16th century. Lima was named the gastronomical capital of the Americas and is home to the highest concentration of mu museums in the country, making the city a hub of Peruvian cultural activity. One of the best ways to get acquainted with Lima is a city tour. We'll start our tour at the Peruvian market, the Cerquelo market, where you'll be able to appreciate a wide variety of Peruvian products, enjoy and taste exotic fruits, and be amazed by the huge variety of fish and seafood. The Plaza Mayor, also known as the Plaza de Armas, located in the heart of the city, is a very historical center. Some of the highlights surrounding and close to the plaza include the Governor's Palace, the official residence, and the office of the Peru's president. Here, the changing of the palace guards takes place twice a day, exactly at noon. The Archbishop's Palace, which was originally built during the 1600s, the cathedral was the first church in 1535 and rebuilt numerous times. A city tour of Lima isn't complete without visiting the catacombs of the Monastery of St. Francis, Francisco. The basement of the working monastery reveals the bones of the wealthy who believed they would be laid to rest in their expensive plots. The tour reveals what actually happened to their remains. The Aliga House is as old as Lima itself. When conquistador Francisco Pizarro founded the capital on January 18, 1535, he gave the plot adjacent to that of the government palace to his trusted ally, Jerome de Alaga, so they could be neighbors. 18 generations of the Alaga family have resided in the same mansion ever since. It's been renovated continuously, but the oldest house, but it is the oldest house in the Americas. Jerome's Descendants currently live in a modern annex, but much of the original house remained on display. Our next stop is the Larco Museum. An in, in 18th century Viceroy's mansion built over a 7th century pre-Columbia pyramid, the museum offers one of the largest pre -pre best presented displays of ceramics in Lima. Founded by pre-Columbian collector Rafael Larco Voyle in 1926, the collection includes more than 50,000 pots with ceramic works from the Cupas Nikyu, the Chimu, the Chanque, Nazca, and Inca cultures. Its galleries provide an overview of 3,000 years of Peruvian pre-Columbian history through ceramic, textile, and precious metal artifacts. Highlights include sublime motion portrait vessels presented in, simply, in simple dramatic lit cases and a warrior weaving in one of the rear galleries that contains 398 threads to the linear inch, a record. There's also beautiful displays of gold and jewels. Our hotel for two nights in Lima is the Arari Lima Myra Flores Hotel. This boutique hotel is located in the heart of the fashionable Miraflores district. Miraflores is an upscale suburban district of Lima located about 10 kilometers from the central city. Enjoy some of Lima's best views from the parks of the Malcon Boardwalk, a miles long stretch of green space on the cliffs above the Pacific Ocean. Miraflores is also home to some excellent restaurant and shopping options. After spending a couple of days exploring Lima, we'll fly to Cusco. We'll be met in Cusco by a local guide and then head out to the Sacred Valley. Also known as Yurubamba Valley, Peru's Sacred Valley is located near Cusco in the valley below the legendary Inca ruins of Machu Picchu. The area encompasses everything between Calpe and Leme, Pisac and Olitentambo. Formed by the Urumbamba River, the Fertile Valley proved to be an important agricultural center for the Incas. 
They believed that the river's flow was linked to the constellations and was the Milky Way's counterpart on Earth. The Incas built many great estates, temples, and palaces throughout the region, the ruins of which have become popular on Peru tours with tourists around the world. It was given the name Sacred Valley because it contained some of the best land available and it was the property of the Incan emperor. For two nights in the Sacred Valley, we stay at a beautiful boutique hotel, the Snasta UK Hotel, located in the heart of the Sacred Valley of the Incas, is built in an old monastery from the 18th century at the foot of the mountains in a surprising natural enclave. Just five minutes from the city of Urumbamba and 30 minutes from Olayate Tombo train station in Pisac, the hotel is a wonderful place to enjoy a cozy and relaxing atmosphere with the appearance of an Andean village surrounded by flowers and green areas. On our way to the hotel, we'll stop in Pisac and see our first archeological site. The Pisac ruins are among Peru's most intact ancient sites and a perfect example of the ingenious Inca architecture. They are built on top of a mountain that towers over the small town of Pisac. The views of the countryside are spectacular and the ruins are remarkable. The ruins stand at what was a very strategic point for the Incas. They not only guard the Urumbamba River below, but also a pass that leads towards the jungle to the northeast. The sheer size and location of the site also suggests that Pisac was an important defense against the, any potential invasion of Cusco, which was the capital of the entire Inca Empire. After touring the ruins, you will descend to the town and spend some time in the local market, interacting with the people, observing the local identity, and doing a little shopping. Many tourists are drawn in by Pisac's bustling market, by far the biggest and most visited in the region, a place where haggling is expected to score colorful, handmade, traditional crafts. While the market is officially held every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, it has become so popular that it usually takes over the Plaza de Armas and surrounding streets every day of the week. Our second day in the Sacred Valley will be a full day of touring as there is lots to see. We'll start in Chinchero, a small village in the heart of the Sacred Valley between Cusco and Urumbamba. It sits at an elevation of 12,500 feet and has wonderful views of the Urumbamba mountain range. This area is famous for weaving and you may be able to see talented weavers demonstrating the process at local workshop. The technique is complex and well worth seeing. You may even get to try the weaving process yourself. Our next stop are the salt mines of Moras. Looking down on the mines, you'll see a dizzying array of white irregular rectangles. The source of the mines or Salinaris is a warm salty spring at the head of the valley. Although the Inca created the mines some 2,000 years ago, the harvesting method hasn't changed much. The water is directed towards the pool by an intricate network of channels that gradually run downhill into the terrace pools. Once the water arrives, the pools in the pools it evaporates after a few days and leaves behind a thin layer of salt. Workers then scrape the dry salt from the sides and bottom of the pool. Once the salt has been removed, the pools are refilled and the process starts again. The salt mines of Maras are still in use today. These days, there are thousands of pools or picotos, with each picoto yielding around 150 kilograms of salt per month. You can sometimes see the salt marketed abroad as Peruvian pink salt. Very close to Maras is Moray with its fascinating terraces. The shape of the impressively large amphitheater-like terracing has generated much speculation about its function. Through, though theories have ranged from amphitheater to extraterrestrial airport, evidence shows that it was actually a site where the Incas engaged in our agricultural experiments, chosen due to its natural bowl-like shape. The Incas set about building Centric terraces on different levels of the bowl, with steps leading from one level to the next following a zigzag line. Then even put in place an underwater irrigation system, which brought water from nearby lakes. 
in the middle of the terraces lay a huge rock, which was used as a kind of plug to release excess water trapped on the bottom terrace. The logic was that each level of the terrace has a different microclimate depending on its depth in the earth. The deepest part was the hottest and temperatures decreased as terraces climb upward and outward, allowing the Incas to find the optimal condition for growing crops such as corn, potatoes, and the Andean grains, quinoa, and kiwicha. Although it is no longer in use, indigenous Andean crops are currently planted in one section to create a sort of living museum. This site took, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> This site shows the range of accomplishments of the once glorious Inca air empire. For those who may not typically find agricultural practices fascinating, considering the mysteries of how this ancient culture flourished and became one of the most powerful empires in history, the Moray Amphitheater is a jaw-dropping piece of the puzzle. Our last stop of the day is always a favorite. We'll visit the Mizumine community. Upon arrival, the villagers will give you a warm welcome with music and typical dances. There, you will be able to learn about the Indian family's lifestyle by sharing some of their daily activities with them. Then you will get a chance to enjoy a delicious and traditional lunch prepared with local products. Today is the big day. It starts with a beautiful train ride into the small town of Aguas Calientes. Because of lunch Get restrictions on the train, we can only take a small overnight bag for the next two nights and our main luggage will be sent on to Cusco. Here we are, the iconic Machu Picchu. Often referred to as the lost city of the Incas, Machu Picchu is an icon of the Inca civilization. The mystical citadel is perched 2,592 meters high on Machu Picchu mountain, set against a vast backdrop of steep lush mountains that spike up from the deep valleys of the Urubamba and its tributaries below. Having never been discovered by the Spanish con conquerors, it was found relatively intact by U.S. explorer Hiram Bingham on July 24, 1911, making Machu Picchu a prime example of Inca architecture. The name Machu Picchu is thought to mean old or ancient mountain, and most archaeologists agree that em Emperor Pachachui chose the site in the mid 15th century due to its sacred geography and position for astronomy. Many archeologists speculate that Machu Picchu's fine stonework and temple precincts indicate its importance as an agricultural center and the layout and quantity of the temples indicate that it was a religious center. It boggles the mind to think exactly how the Incas managed to transport the stones up Machu Picchu mountain but it's the site's mysterious origins that are central to its enduring appeal. While in Aguas Calientes, we spend two nights at one of my favorite hotels. Hold on, I think I missed a page. It's easy to spend the whole day when wandering the citadel with its numerous flights of steep stone steps interconnecting its palaces, temples, storehouses, and terraces. The highlights are the elegant sun temple, the surreal royal mausoleum, the monolithic shrines of the sacred palace, and the mysteriously carved into Wanana stone. While in Aguas Calientes, we spend two nights at one of my favorite hotels in the world. In Quintero, Machu Picchu Pueblo Hotel is an intimate Andean village with terraced hills, waterfalls, stone paths, and 83 whitewashed adobe casitas tucked away in the cloud forest. The property has 12 acres of exquisite natural beauty where 214 bird species, such as the golden-headed quetzal and the iconic Andean cock of the rock, and the world's largest orchid collection, 372 species have been registered. Our second day in Aguas Calientes is a free day. You may choose to return to Machu Picchu, explore the quaint town, or enjoy this amazing hotel and grounds. Next, we'll visit Cusco. The continent's oldest continuously inhabited city is located in southeastern Peru near the Yorubamba Valley of the Andes mountain range. 
Before the arrival of the Incas, Cusco was inhabited by the Kilki people from 900 to 1200 AD. The city grew to become the capital of the Inca Empire and was the center of its political, military, and cultural dealings. While Spaniards originally came to Cusco in November 1533, the city was not officially founded until Francisco Pizarro arrived in March of 1534. Just as Cusco was important to the Incas, it became the center for Spanish colonization as well as a base for the spread of Christianity. The city's importance began to wane until the discovery of Machu Picchu by Hiram Bingham in 1911, which brought Cusco worldwide attention. Cusco is famous for its curious blend of Inca and Spanish culture, most evident where colonial Spanish churches and convents have been built squarely on top of masterfully constructed Inca walls, such as Cord Cancha, the Inca temple poking out from under the colonial church of Santo Domingo. Despite the Spanish, Spanish colonists' best efforts to pillage the city of its Inca riches, they failed to completely destroy the massive network of Inca stonework, which continues to withstand both time and elements while the Spanish buildings crack and crumble around them. Aside from the archaeological and religious sites of interest, Cusco is, Cusco is home to a multitude of quality restaurants, bars, and cafes, offering an array of local and international drinks and cuisine. And in fact, there's a Irish pub next to the main cathedral that's quite popular with people when they come to visit it, and it's very Irish. And we're going to get to know Cusco on a city tour. Our tour is gonna to begin at the Corgi Cancha Temple, an old Incan palace and main center for the worship of the sun god Inti. Once the Spanish con conquered Peru, the Dominican order built a church over the temple's foundations, the Temple of Santo Domingo. And you can see here, so you can see this is a, the um, Christian temple, and then below this gray area here, that's the wall of the Incan temple. Then on to the main square, Plaza de Armas, with its imposing Cusco Cathedral. Situated on a sacred Inca site, the 16th century cathedral took nearly 100 years to build. Des designed in the Gothic Renaissance style, with Baroque touches, floor plans for the magnificent church were built in the shape of a Latin cross. Also known as the Cathedral Basilica of the Assumption of the Virgin, the church is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site containing major archaeological relics, artifacts, statues, and hundreds of colonial paintings. But the church's historical beginnings weren't always benevolent. For starters, Cusco, Cusco Cathedral was built on the foundations of an ancient Inca temple. The temple was the site of Viracocha's palace, a 15th century emperor named after the creator deity worshiped by the Inca people. Taking sacred stone from nearby citadel of Saxi woman, located on the hills above the city, the Spaniards forced the Inca, pe Inca peoples to construct the cathedral. The supplanting of the original temple site was a degrading act meant to destroy the Inca religion from the area and replace it with Catholicism. However, the Inca laborers added their own sacred indigenous touches in the church's construction, including the carved head of a jaguar on the cathedral doors. From the town square, we'll, head, we'll visit Saxa woman two kilometers away. Emperor Pashkuti began building the hillside citadel in the 1440s, but the massive complex wasn't completed until nearly a hundred years later. Today, only a fraction of the original structure still stands, the rest having been torn down by the Spaniards to build houses in Cusco. What does remain, however, is remarkable. The most impressive feature might be the massive 66 foot tall outer walls, which are still intact and zigzagging together like razor sharp teeth having withstood battles, earthquakes, and time. 
Even though the largest of the stones weighs over 300 tons, they are fitted perfectly in the Inca style reserved for important structures. It is believed that in ancient times, this area was probably used for cer ceremonial gatherings. Today, visitors may be lucky enough to catch one of the many sun ceremonies still held throughout the year. In Quechua, the name Saxu woman means satisfied falcon. Next, we visit the Taipan Water Temple, an Incan archeological complex in which water flows through large carved stone canals. There, you will appreciate the Inca's amazing hydraulic engineering knowledge, as well as a wonderful system of terraces from where the land still delivers privileged fruits until today. We continue our tour to visit Adewailailas. This small, quiet village, 45 kilometers from Cusco, is home to a church with a simple exterior and unimaginably ornate interior, the Church of St. Peter the Apostle. Wait you see this. As soon as you cross the threshold, visitors are overwhelmed by an explosion of gold, wood carvings, paintings, and Baroque decorations. Now, the unforgettable experience of crossing the Peruvian Andes between Cusco and Puno aboard the Peru Rail Titicaca train. This train was created to provide passengers with all the luxuries they could want on a trip while offering them a chance to forge a mystical connection through, with nature. Enjoy unrivaled service of uh, this beautiful train, dining in a 1920s style Pullman carriage and absorbing breathtaking landscapes. The open air observation car is a dream for photographers keen on cap to capture the quintessential panoramas. The route covered by the Peru Trail Titicaca train is considered by many traveler, travel magazines to be one of the most beautiful in the world. And the once in a lifetime adventure lasts approximately 10 hours and 30 minutes. Aboard, you can enjoy two dining cars decorated in the style of the Pullman cars of the 1920s. Also during the trip, you'll have the finest in gourmet food and indulgent afternoon tea. Once in Puno, we will spend a day exploring some of the sites on Lake Titicaca. First stop is Amatani Island. Amatani Island is another place which preserves the traditions of the old empire. It is one of the most beautiful islands of the lake with its decoration of climbing plants and cultural relics. On this island can be found the archeological remains of one of the holiest cities of the empire. Then a stop at the fascinating floating islands of Euros. The fairy tale like Euros islands are made entirely from Totoro reeds. The lives of the inhabitants of these artificial islands are entirely dependent upon the reed beds they live among. Totoro reeds were first used centuries ago to build these islands on Lake Tikaka by the Euro Amara families who made their home on the lake. The local people's boats were also made from Totora reeds and they use these vessels for fishing. Even some of the island's earth handicrafts are made from Totora reeds and the friendly people of the community offer their work to visitors as a souvenir of their visit to this magical place. Our tour runs from September 21st to October 1st, which is right in the middle of spring in Peru and we expect beautiful weather. Days are bright and sunny with average temperatures of about 18 degrees Celsius. Let's go over everything that is included in the tour. So there's 10 nights, superior first class accommodation, including those two nights at the Incaterra Diablo, transportation by luxury air conditioned coach, 10 breakfasts, so it's breakfast every day, seven lunches, three dinners. We visit the Larco Museum and Casa El Oligia visit, also Chinchero and Pizac, visit the Maras salt flat, salt pools, the Moray agricultural terraces, the Inca rail train to Aguas Calientes, entrance and tour of Machu Picchu, the Cusco city tour, the Titicaca Vista Dome train to Puno, Tipan excursion, the excursion to Amatani Island, excursion to the floating islands of Euros, 
Solistani Graves Excursion, an English speaking guide, your interior flight, airport transfers, and your Women's Travel Club tour host. So the rate for the tour, um, including kind of everything from when you get to Lima to when you leave from Puno is uh, double occupancy is 4,999 Canadian and that's sharing a room uh, or that's approximately $3,990 US. So as we mentioned, if you're coming solo and you want to take advantage of that rate, but don't have a roommate, we will match you with a roommate. Single occupancy is $6,249 Canadian, or that works out to about right now $5,000 US. Um, there's no deposit required at time of booking. There is a $1,300 deposit due right now, May 1st, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Final payment is due July 1st. So I just want to address um, just this, because this tour is coming up in September, and so we have to definitely consider what's happening in uh, the world with, with COVID and, and such, and what travel restrictions and how they might affect us. So right now, we know that any travelers into Peru must have a negative COVID test issued no more than 72 hours before they get there. And um, that you will be required to self quarantine for 14 days and fill in a health declaration. Uh, returning to Canada, of course, uh, right now from Canada, we're in a do not travel advisory and um, coming back, there's a mandatory uh, quarantine and testing in a government run facility for three days. And then you have to quarantine for 14 days at home. Um, so what we're doing is we've been putting off the deposit until these restrictions relax because we, we can't really travel comfortably and realistically with these conditions in place. So right now, the deposit put off till May 1st. And we will possibly put it off again um, if these restrictions aren't lifted by then, which is a couple weeks from now. So I, I'm not expecting them to be lifted quite that soon. So it could possibly put, put off again. If everything is not good to go by final payment date, then this tour will be moved um, to 2022. Uh, I know that we probably have some Americans that, that would be pretty good and able to travel, um, but Canadians aren't, and there are still some states that can't travel right now um, from the US. And we also have to make sure that Peru is open and ready for guests before we can say that this tour is a complete go. Um, so if you're interested and you want to book, you can book, there is no deposit right now. And just knowing that um, you won't have to pay a deposit until the restrictions are listed, lifted a bit. And we know that the tour will be a go. Or if not, then you'll be on the list for uh, the this tour coming up in 2022. And that is the end of my talking. <laughs> That's very good. You Sick of listening well. to me. But are there any questions that didn't get addressed in any of this? Um, no, it, it looks pretty quiet. Um, yeah, hopefully somebody will raise their hand and engage in the chat. You were very clear at the end. And by the way, you did very well with your pronunciations. Oh, thank you. I practiced a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so no hands raised. There must be some questions. Okay. Anybody just want to raise your hand and say hi? <laughs> oh, yeah. See, that, that gets people. Did it work? Did it work? Okay. Here's Janet. Hi, Janet. How are you? Oh, oh I think it. you're... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I've got to continue on with my Spanish lesson since you've appointed me to be the interpreter for the group. Excellent. Without Thank permission. you. <laughs> without my permission or knowledge. <laughs> I don't mind doing it, Marianne. Excellent. Okay, so we will know one way or the other by July 1st whether we're going or not. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because if things don't clear up before, then 
yeah. we're going to have to reschedule because we just yeah. can't, you know, safely go until we know everybody can safely travel. So, yes. and trust me, we don't want to put off any more yeah. tours than we have to, but we can't travel until it's it's safe and good to do yeah. so. So that's where we're at. Yeah, I'm just glad we're not going to Brazil. It seems really terrible over there. No, no, not Brazil for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So, well, okay, thanks. fingers crossed, everybody will get vaccinated and it will clear up yeah. and we'll, yeah. we'll just be good to go then and we can get back to traveling and, and seeing each other and doing what we love. That's it. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks, Janet. Keep up with the Spanish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Hasta la vista. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye bye. And Daniela, hi, how are you, Daniela? Oh, you're still muted. Just un unmute yourself. Hello. Hi, how are you? Fine, how are you? I, I won't keep you long. I just wanted to say thank you because uh, I have signed up just because I love Peru. I've been there, I've been everywhere that you have been showing and it was wonderful uh, memories for me. Oh, excellent. Uh, but I would like to wish you Guys, a lot of luck. I will Thank not be joining you, but uh, I really enjoy your talks. So. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, too. And thank you for attending. Oh, I like that. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. So, Marianne, can I ask a question? Sure. I know because we had um, a series of tours that were going after each other. So, is there a could the possibility exist that uh, Peru might be might not be accessible, but the Amazon, for example, could still run? Or is that unlikely? no? Because the Amazon that we're going to is the Peruvian Amazon, ah, okay. so it'll be the same rules. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. So yeah, it'll be the same. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Marion. Oh, Marion, you had your hand up. You put your hand down. <laughs> Try it again. Oh, she's got. It. Okay. I'm going to allow you to talk. Hi, Marianne. How are you? You just have to unmute yourself. There we go. Hey, um, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. Uh, I just wanted. I just wanted to say that um, um, I'm another one who has been to most places that you show, <laughs> but I'm going back and this. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying all of them, but this one was very special to me uh, as a country. Uh, and and you've shown it really really well. Oh, and this, I love Peru. I do. Oh, I do like, too. <laughs> you, know, you know, Africa is my heart. But yes, Peru mine too. It's a mine close too. second. I really really enjoy Peru. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I have as well. So uh, thank you so much for putting on these uh, travel uh, um, sessions because I've really really enjoyed them. Oh, excellent! Thank you so much, Marian. It's thank nice you. to chat with you. Yes. Take care. Bye. 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 Excellent. Okay. Last call for hands up for questions. <laughs> no. Well, you did such a good job. Oh, no hold questions. on. We do. I got one more. Oh. Yay. Okay, De Deborah. I yep. Yeah, just a hi. How are you? I'm fine. Um, I just recently joined your your club and I really enjoy these Wednesday um, talks. It's just fun, even if it's someplace you're not booked to go, it's just fun to see. Yeah. Um, I did have a quick question uh, and not about Peru, but since you mentioned Africa, somewhere either on your website or on the Facebook page, I saw a, possibly a trip to Africa, a working kind of trip where- Oh, yes, so we're still, working on the dates for that so that was the um the one where you you actually it's it's not as luxurious to say oh. as some tours but you actually go and for a week kind of work um basically in a in a game reserve oh. um so you could be just out there counting plants of some sort or you could you know there's opportunities you do game counts um and then sometimes there's even things like when they have to tag um rhinos or collar animals you can be part of that too 
And so it's a really amazing kind of opportunity and experience. Um, it's not, for those who haven't seen it yet, um, it's not as um, luxurious as, say, when we go and we stay in the beautiful tented lodges we stay in. So you still stay in. It's a, it's a tented accommodation, but it's a little bit more basic. Um, it does have a, a washroom, it, like an ensuite washroom in it. So that, that's always good to know. <laughs> so one of my key things going to Africa, I need my own washroom. <laughs> so it does have that. Um, and then is it's a working holiday. So um, it's, it's for more geared to, to someone that's kind of been to Africa before and done the normal game drives and wants that, you know, kind of next step, that little more behind the scenes, a little bit more hands-on, mm -hmm. um, that's who it's geared to. It's uh, fairly well-priced um, as compared to a lot of the other Africa trips, just because of, of the type of tour it is. And we're just, just we were going to offer it kind of right before Tanzania and that group of Africa tours. Um, but just because they're coming up already in, in September, we thought that might be a bit too early. So we might um, offer it with the uh, kind of June 2022 Africa tours and or the October 2022 Africa tours. So it, like it, you don't have to go on those tours, but whenever we do Africa, we do it kind of in, in chunks of tours. And that way our tour host only goes, flies over once and stays and does a bunch of back-to-back -back tours. So um, that's why it's kind of on either end of, of one of those chunks of tours. Um, so yeah, it will come up. Um, and be up on the website then once we kind of decide which yeah. to kind of stick it with. <laughs> I know both. Um, I'm doing the June tours and Kirsten is doing, she's hosting the October tours and we both really want to do this. So I'm sure I, I would suspect it's going to come up for both. Just okay. the group of June. So it'll be in June 2022. Okay either be probably before the Uganda tour if you look on the website and see the Uganda tour it'll probably be just before that or it'll be in um I think it's early October. October. and I would think uh, I'm not sure the order of those tours exactly in October yet I think we have Kenya up on the site but we still have Botswana and Namibia coming up and so it might come and I, I think it will go Namibia, Botswana, Kenya, but not positive. And if it does, then it will be right before Namibia, which will, will be will work kind of logistically too for where it is. Right. And that's, that's just for a small number of ladies, isn't it, Marianne? It's not a yeah, long it had a really small cap on it just because of the type of tour it was. I forget what the cap was, but it's pretty small. Yeah, I think it's six well, or seven. Definitely, I'll definitely be interested in that. I have the only place I've been in Africa is Kenya, and it was on a mission trip. Oh, okay. Um, we didn't even have bathrooms. <laughs> oh, see, there you go. It's like luxury for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a, a washroom, that's great. <laughs> yeah, and that was the thing. And the other thing they said was um, they don't usually have, like, it's self-catering. I'm like, no, no, somebody's got to come cook for us. <laughs> we can't possibly cook for ourselves. Oh. <laughs> so so they, they worked out to have it catered for us. <laughs> Okay. Great. Well, I, I will look for that then. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming out and attending. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the show. I always enjoy doing the shows and connecting. And it, it's always great just to chat with everybody. So I love that. Um, next week, we are going to Costa Rica, which is another place I love. Um, so definitely join us and, and sign up for next week. And we'll head to Costa Rica and go see what we can find in the way of sloths and toucans and parrots for you. Um, so everybody have a great day. Stay safe. Take care. Try and get vaccinated. And we will touch base next week. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. All right.